can't do this just in the classroom. We can't do that just on our, you know, 360 some acres. We've got to reach out beyond where we are in Nashville and Tennessee in the United States. We have to both bring Vanderbilt to the world as well as bring the world to Vanderbilt. I worked in Guatemala on this food supplement to help children suffering from malnutrition. I help preserve and digitize the oldest and most vulnerable records of slaves in Cuba. I'm working on a low-cost capsule for gastric cancer screening in Honduras and other rural countries. I study the bones of an ancient empire in Peru. Vanderbilt University's students and faculty connect, create, and contribute to the people of Latin America. For political science professor Mitch Seligson, that contribution started more than 40 years ago. It was risky in those days, in the early days of democracy. He created the Latin American Public Opinion Project, La Pop, which today conducts in-person surveys in more than 30 countries, making sure all voices are heard. With the Latin American Public Opinion Project and the surveys we do, we can get into the details. Okay, yes, you voted for that candidate, but what was behind that vote? Why did you want why did you vote the way you voted? Then we get more deeply into people's values. This is a great chance for me to get real life experience dealing with data in a workplace environment. For computer science and history double major Lawrence Waller, that experience translates into using technology to help La Pop improve its data collection. Here, when I sit over at that desk, you know, I'm dealing with these points that are real-life people in, in Mexico, in Peru, and Guatemala. How can Vanderbilt, you know, small Vanderbilt, make a huge difference in all these different disparate regions? How do you fight the second leading cause of cancer death worldwide, gastric cancer? In Honduras and other rural countries where 70% of the cases occur, the difference could be a simple, low-cost capsule and flexible line. So it's a little capsule with a camera in it on the end of this flexible tether that the patient can swallow and then uh, it feeds video uh, back through the tether uh, to, for the doctor to see. Christopher Line worked on this project as an undergrad and now is continuing that work as a graduate student in Professor Pietro Valdostri's engineering lab. So if we can get something that's low cost and that easy to run so that volunteers could use it, uh, we, we could have a hope, basically, of catching the cancer early enough to be able to help patients. This trans-institutional project builds on research in Honduras by Vanderbilt University Medical Center doctors and engineering students. You know, I've worked on several projects in just in, in school, in engineering school. This is by far the, the most uh, relevant to people's lives. Guatemala has the third highest rate of malnutrition in the world. Almost 50% of kids under five years old are malnourished. The solution? Mani Plus, a food supplement created with the help of faculty and Vanderbilt students from nearly every school, including Peabody's Eunice Jun. And so I ended up working on an interactive product um, packaging solution that basically was like, I redescribed it as like the happy meal for Monty Plus. Jun, who is also a computer science major in engineering, gathered invaluable research in Guatemala. It's given me a stronger commitment to service and how academic work and intellectualism can be of service to society and to real people. After years of work led by Ted Fisher, director of the Center for Latin American Studies, and countless others, a facility to mass produce Mani Plus opened in Guatemala. And the idea was that we can make a product to combat malnutrition in Guatemala that's locally sourced, that stimulates the local economy, and that treats this problem of malnutrition. And when I found out from that the the product plant was opening up just a couple weeks ago, I like frantically Facebook messaged the, someone I had met in Guatemala who's working on Monte Plus on the Guatemalan side. And I was just like, I can't believe this is happening. Congratulations. And you feel like you're giving these people life again. Um, they've been erased out of the history many times, the people that we're working on. Mm -hmm. This is about trying to build a whole community mm -hmm. history and finding these people over time. And they are looking to paint a picture of slave societies in colonial Latin America. Their canvas, ancient records tucked away in churches long forgotten.
We really are changing the narrative of history by bringing them into the storyline. History professor Jane Landers is one of the leading experts on Africans that lived in colonial Latin America and the Atlantic world. She works closely with graduate student Fernanda Britones. Jane is a wonderful scholar and I read her book when I was doing my master's in Brazil. And when I decided to come to the U.S. for my Ph.D. studies, I thought Vanderbilt was sort of a natural choice. Britones and Landers recently went to Cuba to preserve church documents of slaves that once lived in Spanish Florida. Just looking at all of those shelves and all of those books and thinking there's so much history here and no one is looking at it. And it just makes your heart palpitate. It's like, oh my God, look at all of this. Britones is part of a pipeline of students working with Landers, along with Vanderbilt's library, to help make these documents available online for all to see. We'll talk a little bit about how we actually determine the sex of an individual and the age at death. Anthropology professor Tiffany Tung is unraveling the mysteries of the Wari Empire, the first empire in South America. Her clues? Ancient bones. So if you think of the skeleton as a bony diary that you can sort of read to reconstruct somebody's life, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Senior Karthik Yarlagata is one of Tung's many students helping read the clues of bones more than a thousand years old. It was Tung who convinced the molecular and cellular biology major to add anthropology as another major. When you add anthropology to that, you're, becoming, you're starting to look at things in more of the sense of what's this, uh, the effect of something on a human population? What does this mean for humanity as a whole? Yar Legata earned hands-on research experience in Peru. What we were focusing on is what leads to the collapse of a civilization. And you can really identify that through people's bones, which I don't think, you know, it, it, it's not something that ever occurred to me until, you know, I learned about it in class, and then you get to do hands-on work with it, and it's really amazing. What is a large gold shipping container doing at the Ingram Commons? It's just walking into this big gold box and you end up having a conversation with somebody, in our case, in Mexico City, and they tend to be about the things that matter the most to you. So it's kind of a good metaphor for what we're doing all the time here on the Commons. It's a portal, an art project called Shared Studios, using technology to connect people worldwide for 20-minute conversations. We could relate. We were the same age, both really close to our families. I wrote this in the book, but if we had ended up living in the same place at some point, that we would have been really good friends. But I think it's a really cool way to kind of get someone yes, else's point of view. Yeah. The portal is magical because you go inside and have a conversation with someone you've never met, someone you'll never see meet again, and you end up learning something about yourself. I'm so proud of everything that we're doing and I'm really excited about the energy that faculty and students have to take us even further, to move us even further forward in international efforts. To connect, create, and contribute to Latin America.